One of the biggest questions that a lot of people have is if it's really worth it to upgrade to the iPhone 6 from the iPhone 5S, or if this is really just the bigger iPhone. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this comparison is brought to you by Squarespace. Join me for iPhone 6 versus iPhone 5S. If you pay attention to the average iPhone hater, which are quite common here on YouTube, you'll be immersed in a sea of negativity that claims that the iPhone 6 is just the bigger iPhone. That could be true if you judge a book by its cover, so let's dive in and see which device is better. The face of the iPhone 6 looks indeed like every single iPhone that's ever been launched, but once you stack it side by side with the iPhone 5S, you'll notice just how different they are. The iPhone 6 has a display that's 15% larger, though retaining a similar pixel density, and in that same matter, it's 15 millimeters taller, 8 millimeters wider, 17 grams heavier, even though it's almost a full millimeter thinner, if that's even easy to believe. Coming from an iPhone 5S, which is already thinner than thin, says a lot, but because of that increased size, you really don't feel that the iPhone 6 is actually heavier because of better weight distribution. The iPhone 6 is also more powerful in internals. It has NFC for Apple Pay, additional LTE radios, voice over LTE where supported, and more storage options, though I won't bore you with these details since the behavior of both devices is almost identical. The word feel is really the theme going forward. I can honestly say that the iPhone 5S had a better looking design than the iPhone 6, especially when you compare these horrible antenna cutouts, but do yourself a favor and walk to an Apple store or do whatever you can to hold the iPhone 6 before you judge it. The curves in the display of the iPhone 6 match perfectly with the curves of the aluminum body, and this gives the device a feel that's almost unmatched in hand. Gone are the annoying chamfered edges of the iPhone 5S, which did make it look like a piece of jewelry, but uh, didn't look great once you dropped the phone for the first time. In the hand, the iPhone 6 feels more refined, and that's also the feeling that it stands whenever you hold the phone in your ear. One-handed usability is impaired though, let's be honest here. The thinner chassis of the iPhone 6 does help this to some extent, but the 4-inch display on the iPhone 5S is clearly the winner in that department. Apple's new reachability feature does help a lot, but uh, the double touching on the home button is very annoying whenever you're trying to hit every single navigation key at the top. This does call for a dramatic change in the user interface of iOS, and uh, this is a perfect segue to start talking about the software. As is the tradition, the existing iPhone matches the newer iPhone to a great degree when it comes to software features. With the exception of certain camera enhancements, iOS 8 looks almost identical on the iPhone 6 when compared to the iPhone 5S, and that does include all the services and applications that are included. Where the iPhone 6 is unique is with the reachability features and with a standard and zoom mode uh, that uh, you'll find for the home screen. The standard mode replicates how icons are seen on the iPhone 5S, which will allow you to see more things on the display than with the zoom in feature, which bloats everything out and makes it look like if you're using a 4-inch display, though on a bigger 4.7-inch canvas. We recommend that you stick to the standard mode, though you will notice some fuzziness here and there and bloat in certain applications that are not enhanced for the new 4.7-inch display on the iPhone 6. You'll also notice that the iPhone 6 is faster to launch applications here and there, but other than that, software is the last place you'll find differences here. I wish I could report on the M8 co-processor on the iPhone 6 compared to the M7, but that'll have to wait for the after the buzz as you really can't find many applications that take advantage of this, and some of these actually require extra accessories. And the same can be said about Apple Pay, which will be launched until October. The user experience is sort of a mixed bag, and that's mainly because you can't always tell the difference between one device or the other. It is definitely more pleasant to consume content on the iPhone 6 because of the bigger display, and most of us agree that iOS 8 was definitely made with a larger screen in mind. Certain things do feel convoluted on the iPhone 5S now that we know better, but for some people, one-handed usability is more important. You will enjoy playing games more on the iPhone 6 or watching a video, though that doesn't mean that the iPhone 5S is a slouch in that department. It's just smaller. 
or you shouldn't expect any differences whatsoever are in the camera. The protruding camera on the iPhone 6 is an annoying sight to see, but other than with the focus pixels, both cameras are almost identical in specifications. The iPhone 6 does have a newer sensor, and the focus pixel technology does help the smartphone take photos significantly faster, and I mean significantly faster, but the resulting photos are pretty much the same. Great color accuracy in daylight, and decent photography at night as well. Other than the option for slow motion video at 240 frames per second, which does bring you really cool video, everything else on the camera department is pretty much the same. Data speeds and Wi-Fi retention are the same, and when it comes to phone calls, those on the other side couldn't really tell that I was using a different phone on either phone call. It just tells you how good call quality is on both devices. One big improvement is battery life. You could say that the 300 mAh difference between batteries on these devices is insignificant, but the iPhone 6 is really the first iPhone that I've ever used where the battery does last all day with my type of usage. The conclusions lie in your needs. If you're currently rocking an iPhone 5S and you like what you have, you might not be missing out on much with the iPhone 6. If you're using any previous iPhone, then the differences are substantial, so yes, you should upgrade. And if you wish to save an extra $100 by purchasing the iPhone 5S today, I would rather you spend them on the iPhone 6. They may look like the same phone, but the iPhone 6 is Apple's new baby, so you can't expect it to get a more promising treatment during the next 12 months, and in that sense, really. Hold the iPhone 6, go to an Apple store and give it a try. You will notice that this is a more refined iPhone and the experience can be better, the display should be bigger, and so far, I do have to admit that I would prefer to stick with the iPhone 6 than to return to the iPhone 5S. Once again, I am Jaime Rivera, this is Pocket Now, and this comparison was brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter the offer code POCKETNOW at checkout. A better web starts with your website. That's it for our comparison of the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 5S. There are more comparisons to come, like for example, the LG G3. Make sure you follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next comparison.